Good morning, good life. In this episode, we are closing out season six, and we're going to be getting into the details about what it means to go after the life you want. We're going to hear from all the wonderful guests that we've had on recently. And I also want to share with you a very important note about the most important part of your day. Do you think you know what it is? Get ready because you're going to be rethinking it a lot after I share something with you. It's time for some detailed therapy so that you can uncover your path to going after the life you want. She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I'm going to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. I cannot believe this is the last episode of season six. It's so funny because when I was prepping for this conversation with you today, I realized something quite extraordinary. If you've been listening to Detail Therapy since the beginning, you know that in our season finale, we always share the answers of our guests of what it means to them to go after the life that they want. We are going to do that today. But what's funny is uh, we really just went from season five to season six so quickly. If you remember, episode 100 was the last day of 2020. And then we just barreled through into season six. And we never got to really reflect on the answers from our guests of season five. So even though season five and season six were so different than in the past, because there are so few interviews with others. Obviously, the pandemic changed a bit of how we do things here. Um, I'm, I'm going to be able to pull those answers from season five as well. And I think you're going to love hearing this. Honestly, it's one of my favorite episodes that we ever do, which is why I'm so surprised somehow we didn't actually do it for the end of season five. Clearly, I had way too many things to tell you about at the end of the year to remember to do this. So it's going to be really, really great. I just love hearing everyone's voices again and hearing them reflect on that question, that question that we're all asking ourselves in this community, you know, what does it mean? So we're going to get into that. It, it, it was just funny. I was talking to my podcast producer, Andrew. Shout out to you, Andrew. Andrew has been with us since episode one at Detail Therapy. We just appreciate his work so much. Um, if you need a podcast producer, let me know. I'll give you the hookup. But honestly, I was talking to him. I could not believe it. And um, I think this is just kind of the right time since we have just been powering through this podcast for so many weeks. And um, I typically take more breaks than we have, but we haven't. This summer is going to be a summer of healing for me. If you've heard about my journey. You heard my new morning routine. You've heard my story. And there's a lot of changes happening in my personal life right now. So I'm actually very much looking forward to taking some time and space, reflecting on all of the changes that 2020 and the beginning of 2021 have brought into my life, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the preparation to power through the rest of the year. So I really appreciate everyone who continues to listen to this podcast and will give me that grace to take a lovely little summer off um, because that's what I intend to do, honey. I intend to take the summer off. (laughs) I am ready for break like I am in the eighth grade and it is time for field day and the last day of school, okay? That's how I feel right now and I'm just really embracing that. So, hey, but if you're tuning in for the first time, that would be really funny. You have a lot to catch up on, but let me introduce myself. My name is Amy Landino. I will be your host. I'm a success coach and founder of Gatlu House, a resource dedicated to helping you go after the life you want. You can see all of our work, including the show notes for this podcast at detailtherapy.online. We do it all over at the Gatlu, so check that out. Before I do my traditional season finale with you, I want to share something that I think is going to be really valuable for you as you go into your summer and think about how you're evaluating your time, how you're enjoying your time, how you're having more fun, how you're observing 
you know, the life that you want? What are we doing every day to get closer to that? I have been reading a book that is actually not uh, not too old, not too new. Uh, I think it's a 2013, and it's by the author Wayne Dyer. If you haven't heard of Wayne Dyer, then go look him up. I mean, this guy has authored so many incredible books. And the one that I'm reading from him right now is called Wishes Fulfilled. And I love it because I feel like it's a book about manifestation, but it is also bringing it when it comes to spirituality, like really, really helping you to look at the meaning of God and your higher self at a whole nother level. So keep that in mind if you decide to pick it up, that there's a lot of conversation around that. But one thing that he talks about is, uh, you know, something to consider when you think about when is the most important part of your day. So if I were to ask you, what is the most important part of your day? The most important point, what would you say? And you know I'm smiling for this one because we all want to say the same thing here, right? It's the morning. But is it? Of course, you know I would say yes, it is the most important part of your day. But the reality is it's the most indicative part of your day because it tells you what you did the night before. And the evening, that moment that you go to sleep is actually the most important point of your day because it's a culmination of everything you did to be able to fall asleep, to get into the headspace, to get the rest that you need in order to wake up, start the day on your terms. So, you know, we talk about this in the Good Morning Good Life Planner, right? Reverse engineer your morning. It starts the night before. How do you get there? So the reason I'm bringing this up is Wayne in Wishes Fulfilled kind of brought this to my attention again in a whole new light. And I absolutely have to share it with you. Like to the point where this chapter of the book is so highlighted, it's more like which parts of the book were you not going to highlight because you've highlighted the entire thing. So I want to share some of it with you. Wayne writes, sleep is the natural state for your subconscious mind which rules about 96% of your waking life. The last five minutes of your day before you enter into your sleep state are the most important five minutes of your day if you are going to begin living a wishes-fulfilled life. In this brief portion of your day, you are going to tell your subconscious mind how you feel and what wishes God, the universal one subconscious mind, is to fulfill upon awakening from your deep slumber. This five-minute segment of time in your bed, about to enter into your subconscious and marinate for the next eight hours or so, is the most crucial segment of your entire 24-hour day. This just got my wheels turning so much because when we go to sleep, we think we're asleep, right? But in all actuality, it's our conscious mind that's going to sleep. And when it's going to sleep, it's simply joining the subconscious and the subconscious never goes to sleep. So what we take with us in those moments before we go to fall to sleep is what we are taking with us to our subconscious. So this is where that conversation around manifestation comes about. What are you thinking about before you fall asleep? Because we often find ourselves thinking about, you know, this crappy part of my day, or this didn't go the way I wanted it to, or I didn't get everything done the way that I wanted to. And the more you put that out there, the more it is being delivered as a telegram to your subconscious that that is the norm and that is what you will manifest for your future. What a game changer. Wayne also is quoting a thought leader, his name is Neville, in this book a lot. It was really the inspiration for the book. And one of the quotes from Neville in the book says, the feeling which comes in response to the question, how would I feel were my wish realized? 
is the feeling which should monopolize and immobilize your attention as you relax into sleep. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. So this is, and we're talking about some really old quotes here. So this is not new. This is not even 2013 new. This is such a brilliant idea that if we're truly going to remove ego or try to remove ego from convincing us of the realness of, oh, you can't really do that. Or, uh, I don't know, you could get close or you could try really hard, but you won't get as lucky. The ego wants to tell us over and over and over how impossible something can be. So why not dream as big as possible in these moments where you're quite literally offering that up as fodder for your subconscious and the dreams you have at night? Now, I will say that as focused as I have been, you guys, the first night I tried to do this, I was so focused on thinking positively that it was almost like, you know how you like shake, like you're about to fall off the bed because you're kind of asleep, but you are you think you're falling. It wasn't like a falling dream. It was like me trying to keep myself awake because of how focused I was. I don't know if it was like, Amy, it hasn't been five minutes yet or whatever, but I was so focused on having this very positive connection to seeing myself achieving a goal and feeling it because I think that's the biggest piece here. You can't just think about it. You have to think about it so much that you feel it happened and let that go through your body. I was so focused on it, I almost couldn't fall asleep. It was very, it was very funny. But I don't think my dreams have changed, but I do know that at least we have gotten the mind focused on something positive so that the likelihood the subconscious hears more of that positivity in that critical one-third amount of time in your life, your sleep time, that manifestation could actually happen. So I wanted to share this. I highly recommend this book if you want a very spiritual approach to what it means to manifesting something to life, because I think we've all got it wrong in a lot of ways. We're trying to convince ourselves during the hustle and bustle of a normal day and the egos of the world, including our own, that our dreams are possible. And it's just a combative environment for us to really see the vision on that. But if we take that critical time, the most important point in the day, right before we fall asleep to recenter where we want our headspace to be for the future and certainly for the next morning, then maybe we have a stronger chance. I just had to share that with you. And I think after the season that we've had, the many seasons that we've had, that this would be a great one to leave off so that you can think about this as you enjoy your time this summer. Maybe you're taking a little break yourself. Maybe you're going on a vacation, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever you do, I hope that you look at what happens when you go to sleep and you do your evening routine to get ready for your morning routine. And when you're writing in your good morning, good life planner and all those things, I hope you're you're considering this extra little thing you can do in those five minutes when you're shutting your eyes with the intention to fall asleep. What do you do during that time? Choose to manifest what you see for yourself during that time. And on that note, I want to ask the wonderful guests of season five and season six of Detail Therapy to share their answers to the big question. You're about to hear from Michelle Barnes, Erica Cruz, Eileen Zhu, Natalie Sisson. Mark Schaefer, Jessica Zweig, and Ashley Stahl. What does it mean to go after the life you want? This is the question that I should have given more thought to when I um, went on this <laughs> podcast. Um, I think that to go after the life that you want, it means creating a definition of success that is tailored to yourself and not a product of what society has told you that you should be working towards or working on. And then 
in a very Michelle way, um, creating a system to move towards that life and keep on um, embracing those changes and moving forward. To me, it means learning to be your fullest, most authentic self and enjoying this entire experience of living, however you want to enjoy it. Mm. It means everything in the world to me because when I am doing that, I'm at my happiest and my lightest and the life that I want is actually the life that I have. I had a really rough 2020. Uh, I was sick a lot, uh, had COVID. My business crashed. That's a long story. Came back, wrote the book, took everything out of me. I took a month off in January. And what I tried to do was really take a month off of work. And I'm laying on the beach. I'm thinking, but I miss work. Wait a minute. I've got this old-fashioned view of work. My old-fashioned view of work is growing up in my, you know, blue collar kind of German stoic family that you're supposed to get away from work and work is to be avoided. I had this realization that that doesn't fit me anymore, that I have a life where it's all together and I, it's rewarding. I help people. I love what I do. I have fun every day. And it's work is something to be embraced and to, it, 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 creates joy in me. And I really think that's the ultimate, the ultimate thing to go for. I don't think you have a choice. I think it's uh, a responsibility. If we all here are here on a divine assignment, it's no accident that we incarnated here on earth at this time, given what's going on in the planet, we have to use our gifts and follow our purpose and build the life that that we want because if we're building a life that we want that means we're inherently in service and making a positive impact and doing good work and doing good and so i i don't think it's a like yeah and I, I, maybe i'll i'll go after the life i want it's not a choice it's not a, it's like not an option it's like a must have responsibility and that to me is what it means and that's honestly what drives me every single day Thank you so much for being a supporter of Detail Therapy so we can have amazing people on like these wonderful ladies and gentlemen who are sharing their ideas and how they have done what they do and the details of what it takes with this show. If you weren't listening, if you weren't leaving your reviews in the podcast store, this would not be possible. And here we are at the end of a sixth season. It's so amazing. And it's all because of you. So thank you so much for being here and thank you for tuning in. I am so excited to take some time and regenerate some energy so we can have a powerful season seven. I know I've been telling you, you know, I have some ideas for how we can continue to improve this show and maybe even make it uh, more frequent in your life. So always share your thoughts on that with me over on Instagram at details podcast. Just leave a comment anywhere or DM us. Just let us know how this show has been helpful for you, what you would like to see in the future so we can continue to improve it. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about the possibility of that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. As always, remember, subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. I'll see you back here for season seven. Cheers. Cheers.